Hey guys, it's Mr. Wolfie, and I'm back again with another episode of what I like to call, well, it's just a, more of a discussion from the last video on human biology and evolution as a, a whole. And it's kind of touching also on some um, of the fat acceptance and fat shaming movements. And I don't condone any sort of fat shaming. Uh, I condone, I mean, I think there should be a discussion that is an honest discussion and not a shutdown discussion. It's like we live in a society where it's gotten to the point where, and this has just happened over the last few years, where it's almost uh, become socially unacceptable to criticize someone for being overweight or obese, but at the same time, it's, it's necessary because it is a problem in the long run, and, and pe you can't just accept it and glorify it and then move on because then you're sending the wrong message to people that it's it's not that the person is, and I address this, I actually have it scripted here, I'm going to read it off in a minute, uh, it's not that the person is, uh, sh should be criticized themselves, it's more like I don't know. I, let me let me read this. I think it, it puts it get uh, it puts it in perspective a little better. I'm not entirely sure if I support the fat appreciation movements. I mean, fat acceptance is one thing. There's no reason whatsoever to hate or abuse people because of their life choices, especially if the only person that's really they're really hurting is themselves. I mean, if everyone wants to evolve, <laughs> my lizard. If everyone wants to everyone wants to evolve into the people from Wall-E, more power to them, but. You know, I'm not in that group. I, I uh, take not only fitness, but overall toughness very seriously. There's no reason to choose weakness and apathy over self-improvement, in my opinion. But that's just me. I don't presume to force my lifestyle on others. Uh, you know, so if, if you want to be you, just be you. Like, don't, I mean, if you, if you don't care about what I'm saying here, just go off, you know, talk about it in the comments if you want to, but I mean, I'm not going to be mad at you for saying, hey, I don't, I don't really agree with your point of view, you know, just whatever, yeah, just don't be a jerk about it, I mean, you can be a jerk about it, I mean, free speech is free, but I'll be a jerk back, <laughs> uh, anyway, but fat promotion, and I'm not talking about just like a little overweight, I'm talking about the people that actively try to become as obese as possible and then glorify it, and you know, Tumblr has a lot of this, um, they want to be a trans fat thing, I don't, People actively trying to gain as much weight as possible to be, you know, popular in some way. I don't, it's so weird. I don't, it doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, there are models and the like who try to be super plus sized for publicity. And people that pretty much worship them for it. And why is my question. There are so many very clear reasons not to do that to yourself. But that's, you know, once again presumptuous of me. And I can't tell other people how to live their lives and then expect them to not do the same for me. And I don't really care if you tell me how to live my life. <laughs> I don't give a crap. I'm going to do it the way I want to do it. And, and, you know, maybe that's the problem here is that none of us are really willing to compromise. Um, it's just sad that so many people are willing to not only kill themselves, but contribute to, and this is big for me, the starvation of so many others by engaging in openly gluttonous and health regressing behavior. You know, uh, obese lifestyles, you can trace, you can follow the money trail, you can follow the uh, resource trail, and high consumption of animal products and processed foods is directly linked to the production of mass-produced animal products, which is directly, uh, directly connected to uh, starvation in other countries. And we'll get to that in another video. Uh, there's plenty of good resources out there for you to look that one up. Um, you know, we feed animals like cows with corn and all kinds of other grain products and directly contribute to the uh, lack of food resources to other countries that could use the food a lot better if we would just stop eating so much dang meat. You know, but anyway. Uh, and it's not to mention the effects such a lifestyle will undoubtedly have on the species as a whole when it comes to offspring genetics. And this is a big thing that I like to, uh, I, I kind of 
think about this kind of stuff a lot. Uh, you, it goes back to my saying that people want to evolve into the Wally -E characters. If you've ever seen Wally, -E, if you've never seen Wally, -E, you should watch Wally, -E because it's genius. It's it's like a fantastic commentary on what the human race, the human species, has been doing to, or is capable of doing to itself if we don't uh, keep an eye on how we are living our lives now. Because everything everything plays off itself. It's how evolution works. It's this, you, you're not evolving. You are not evolving. You cannot evolve. You can adapt. What is ev what evolves is the species as a whole over time. So if you adapt to a situation, then you have offspring. The offspring is adapting in a variety of different ways. Say you take a certain tangent. Say, I get into this argument with vegans a lot. Um, vegans are all... Miss, they mistakenly say that human beings are herbivores and have always been herbivores, and that is not true. Because you can look back, and we have been eating meat since before we were classifiably human animals. You know, the some sort of ape ancestor was, at the very least, omnivorous. And then it became humans. And then humans have had to have meat in their diet at, in some fashion or not had, we don't necessarily require meat. We can make do with plants, but you gotta think about survival as a whole and the availability of food and in the wild, you know, it made a lot of sense to just eat as much plants as we could and then supplement our diet with a pig every now and again, that kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? Some some tribes even, you know, can, can and have for generations survived on entirely meat. Anyway, getting back on topic, uh, vegans say that humans should be herbivores and okay fine go ahead and do that if you as a vegan continue to eat nothing but plant food and you have offspring and you encourage them to eat nothing but plant food your evolutionary line is going that way you're actually creating a species or maybe just a race of human beings that are herbivorous take it this uh, take it this what am i saying Take this line. This is just everyday, normal, average people that are mostly omnivorous, and they go that way. So you're becoming that. You're becoming that. The changes in the species are going to be not obvious, but there will be changes there. And over a prolonged period of time, you're going to branch off into a different species. It's just how that's how it works. See? Okay. It's clear. It's, it makes sense. That's evolution in a nutshell. Um, that's how everything has changed over time is because of alterations in their environment that caused a difference in their um, genetic structure, some sort of adaptation that forced that, that was forced upon them um, in order to survive, and that followed through with, you know, in a variety of different ways from a, a different root system of a creature, um, and also changes in behavior that influenced their evolution in a certain way, and that is mostly what humans have done for the last, you know, several at least tens of thousands of years, um, just, uh, you know, learning to farm altered our genetic structure and our ability to adapt tremendously and changed all sorts of things about our, uh, you know, our physical structure has changed fairly significantly. Uh, it's not like, you know, it's not like you couldn't compare a human from tens of thousands of years ago to the humans today and say that's not a human, there's no way, you know. It's more like very subtle changes in bone density, uh, muscle structure, the way we store fat, the size of our brains, the size of our skeletal system and just height and everything. It's just so many different things that have changed over time because of just things that we did differently uh, in our behavior. And that leads to, I haven't even made it through my final, I'm, I'm just, this is me rambling. Um, changes in our overall <clears throat> physical being because we have just, you know, changed something here and it creates tangents. Uh, you know, tree limbs, they, they, you know, the evolutionary tree is what they call it. It's, you know, it's something here and then all the fingers are a different thing that shoots off of it. But anyway, it goes back to uh, how you live your life and then however you do your offspring, you, you know, however you have your offspring and then how the offspring lives their lives, eventually it branches off. So we have just tons of different possibilities there. Okay, so uh, 
We adapt over time to certain stimuli and have for quite a long time. As a species, we can grow taller, more intelligent, stronger, weaker, dumber, shorter, and anything else depending on how we mate. Um, traits are passed down for parents as everyone in the most basic understanding of genetics should always kn already know. Now, say we only let overweight people reproduce for multiple generations. The result will be a branch of the species that is different to our current one, and in probably an unpredictable way. Uh, to clarify, our current species has not had to worry about obesity as an epidemic, except for the last couple of generations. Because pretty much everything that has been a problem as far as uh, people being chronically overweight and chronically obese, uh, began this about the same time that food became a mass production industry and like it was it basically made it super easy to get lots of calories very fast and uh, the, the processing altered the way that we ate food it turned food completely away from us obtaining it ourselves you know farming uh, or buying it from other people's farms hunting and just getting all the food ourselves to now we just go to the grocery store and get a box of cereal that you know has been all the basically what's happened there is all the calories have been taken out of the plant and put into a food form and then some other stuff has been added to it over time so that now instead of eating the plant itself we're just eating the pure energy from the plant and that's kind of the that's kind of it in a nutshell but there's a, there's a lot more to it than that I'll get to that some other time if at all I don't know if I'll go that deep into the food production part um, uh, but it's really only been a problem for the last, let's see, uh, a little over a hundred years ago is when food production really became a, a thing, an industry. Uh, in truth, the extreme rise in obesity has only been an issue for a few decades, though. You know, since the late 70s is when, uh, you know, the fast food boom, the fast food industry, they were definitely around for quite some time before that. Uh, but... Things like being able to supersize your meals, the marketing of fast food, the uh, over this the abundance of places like McDonald's and Hardee's and Burger King. Just there's like one on every corner of every street now, and they have cheap, easy to get food, and it's just that really led to a huge rise. I mean, you can you basically can look at a chart, and it it's like a steady increase since the 1900s, but then all of a sudden it just goes you know, like a really sharp increase about that point in time. Uh, and that's really where I wanted to end this video, I think. I've, I've, I actually went over a lot more information than I intended to, so I hope you enjoyed that. And I hope you are willing to discuss, I mean, just talk about it in the comments, like, if you want to. You don't have to, just if you want to. Anyway, guys, peace out. Love you guys. This has been Mr. Wolfie.